Hi everyone, I hope you're all well and enjoying doing your home learning packs. Your pack for week three is all about being creative and your writing task for week three is all about how to make a set of instructions, how to write a set of instructions. So, there are two really, really important things that we need to remember when we're writing instructions. The first thing is using our time openers. We're all familiar with this because we've been using time openers a lot in school. So time openers include things like first, then, next, after that, and finally. You might choose to include some different ones in your instructions, and that's absolutely fine, as long as you think about the order that they go in so that your instructions still make sense. The second really important thing that you need to include are your imperative verbs. Now these are your bossy words that give you the instructions about whatever it is that you are making. And they might include things like get, spread, add, put or cut. Those are our imperative verbs. Obviously it depends what it is that you're making so your imperative verbs might be different to these ones. These just apply to what I'm making today. Okay, so, whatever it is that you choose to make to write your set of instructions about is absolutely fine, as long as you've got your adult's permission, but you need to make sure you make it before you write your set of instructions so that it's clear in your mind. Okay, so, we are going to be making a jam sandwich today. I thought we'd do something nice and easy, and then we're going to look at the steps to make the instructions. Okay, so, how to make a jam sandwich. First, there's my time opener, first, get, there's my imperative verb, get your ingredients. So I've got my ingredients ready here. Step one is done. Step two, okay. Then, there's my time opener, then spread the butter on one side of each slice of bread. So I've got my ingredients ready, so that was step one. I'm going to spread the butter, spread my imperative verb there, onto one side of each slice of bread. Okay, that was step two. Step three, I need a new time opener. I've used first, I've used then, mm, let's think of a different one. Let's go with next. Okay. Next, we're going to add, that's our imperative verb, our bossy word that's telling us what to do. Next, add the jam. So that's the next step. I've said my instruction first, so it's clear in my mind what I need to do. So I'm going to add the jam, just like it says in my instructions. As much or as little as you like in your own jam sandwich. Step three was next to add the jam. We've done that. Step four, I'm going to use a different time opener. I'm going to choose after that, but again, you might think of some different ones. After that, put my time opener, my imperative verb. After that, put one slice of bread on top of the other. Step four, done. Step five. This is the final and last instruction. So I'm going to use the time opener finally. I always make sure this one goes at the end because otherwise my instructions won't make sense. Okay, finally, cut the bread in half. So I've got my time opener, I've got my imperative verb. Finally, cut the bread in half. And there we go, my sandwich is made. So, now I've made my sandwich, and you might choose to make a sandwich, you might choose to bake something, you might choose to make a Lego model, whatever it is that you're making, that's absolutely fine, but you need to make sure you make it before you write your instructions. So, I've done the hard work, I've made it, now I need to write my instructions. So, here we go. I need to make sure, when I'm writing my instructions, I start, with my title. 
This needs to relate to whatever it is that you have chosen to make. So how to make a jam sandwich is my title. I need to make sure that I include in my instructions all of the time openers and all of the imperative verbs that I am using in my instructions. Now to make it clearer, I've put numbers and it just helps to set it out a bit more neatly and helps to show what each step is. So we're going to have a look at my instructions. Normally, I would write it after I had made it, but I've written this just so that I can show you what you need to do. So I've got my title. Number one was first, get your ingredients. So let's have a look at this sentence here. First, get your ingredients. My time opener here, hmm, what do you think it could be? You can pause the video if you need to think about it, that's absolutely fine. I'm going to have another read of it. First, get your ingredients. I know that my time opener normally goes at the beginning of the sentence and it tells me what order I'm doing things in. So I know that my time opener here was first. Hmm, now what was my imperative verb? The one that told me what I needed to do in this step. First, get your ingredients. That's right, well done, it's get. This bit tells me what I needed to do. So I needed to get all of my ingredients together. You might want to add another, uh, some more detail in here, so you might want to say what your ingredients are or whatever it is that you are making. Okay, step two. Then spread the butter on one side of each slice of bread. Hmm, I need to find my time open again. Then spread the butter on one side of each slice of bread. Again, I know it goes at the beginning. I know it's the next step. So my time opener is then. I wonder if you can think about what the imperative verb is, the bossy word in this step. Then spread the butter on one side of each slice of bread. Have a think about it. What's the bossy word, the instruction part? That's right. It's spread. That told me what I needed to do in this step. Then spread the butter on one side of each slice of bread. Okay, step three. Next, add the jam. Again, my time opener is at the beginning. Next, add the jam. I've tried to make sure that all my time openers are all different to make my instructions a little bit more interesting. Next, add the jam. Hmm, add the jam. Which of those could be my imperative verb? My bossy word. That's right, add the jam. This is telling me what I need to do. The bossy imperative verb. Next, add the jam. Step four. After that, put one slice of bread on top of the other. Again, my time opener is coming at the beginning. It's telling me what the next step is in my set of instructions. So this one is after that. After that, put one slice of bread on top of the other. So my imperative verb here was put, because again, it's telling me what to do. Now, in the last step, I know it's the last one, because my time opener says, finally. Finally, always goes at the end. If I put it at the beginning, it really wouldn't make sense and my instructions would be really mixed up. So nobody would know how to make a jam sandwich. So finally, cut the bread in half. My imperative verb again is my instruction, my bossy word. So it's the one that says cut. Finally, cut the bread in half. Okay, so I remember to include my title. I've got all of my time openers. I've got my imperative verbs. And I've made sure that I have written golden sentences. So all of my sentences start with capital letters. I have finger spaces after every word. And I've ended every sentence with a full stop. If you would like to challenge yourself, you can make your writing a little bit more interesting by adding some adverbs into your writing. So, for example, in step two, where I've said, then spread the butter on one... On one side of each slice of bread. I can make this a little bit more interesting to the reader by adding an adverb. I could have said how I spread it on. Did I do it really quickly? Did I do it really slowly? Did I do it really carefully? 
That gives the reader a little bit more of a clue about how they should do something. So I could have said, then carefully spread the butter on one side of each slice of bread. So that's another way you can challenge yourself and extend your writing even more. I hope that helps. Remember to use this video and pause it whenever you need to. Good luck with your writing and I look forward to seeing you soon. Bye.